farmers and grocery stores may be at the opposite ends of the supply chain, but they share in making only a fraction of the cost of your food bill. For more on that and how supply chain issues are affecting stores, manager Blaze Calandro is with us. And Blaze, this has got to be a busy time of year for you. Yeah, it absolutely is. It seems like the Thanksgiving year is getting started earlier than normal. I think people are getting out and getting stuff a little sooner than they would otherwise. They might be a little worried about shortages or making sure to get ahead of what's normally super busy next week. Well, as we talked about in that story just now, farmers make only a small margin off everyone's food dollar bill. Grocery stores are in the same boat, is that right? It's true. Um, and I, I think this year is certainly interesting with um, our wholesale costs increasing as much as they have and trying to make the margins that you normally would make and also trying to uh, keep prices sane for customers. And in doing so, how do you, you know, get, uh, get these prices managed, especially with the, the supply chain being so disrupted as it is? It's a struggle because we have our own staffing issues that are going on. So we're only able to juggle a certain number of balls at one time. And one of the big ones right now is just trying to keep up with all of the retail price increases we need to make in order to keep somewhat on top of the margins for normal cost stuff that's increasing um, because it's happening across the board. Now, one of the important points I want to make here is that just because prices are going up doesn't mean you're seeing a higher profit in, this, in the store. Is that right? No, and there's a lot of places where we know customers are more price sensitive and um, we're trying not to kill people. And we're, so we're taking a hit on margin on certain things in order to still make it sane. Because like I say, you look across our order books, across our order apps, and where it flags things for price increases week over week, we're seeing, you know, 10 times or more as many of those check marks as we have in recent past, last couple of years. That's incredible. That's just a huge amount, but it tracks with what we saw in that survey as well as what we're seeing, you know, nationwide and in the state. I guess uh, one important point that we want to hit is turkeys. What are their like price wise and what is their availability this year? So I, I recently looked at some numbers associated with that and we kind of compared this year to 2019 and 2020. And for our standard frozen turkeys versus 2019, we're up we're seeing upwards of 60 plus percent price increases and we don't really make any money on turkeys. That's one of our items that is sort of a, it's level cost. We make, you know, the store makes money on other things, but turkey's not one of those. So what you're seeing is pure cost increases being passed on to the customer. It's nothing that, you know, we're, we're not selling them at a loss. We're selling them at the cost we can get them for. So that 60% is truly a reflection of what cost increases we're seeing. And of course, turkey isn't the only meat we're seeing at this time. The beef uh, is a big, big cost. You know, a lot of people, the demand is still high and prices are going up along with it. Yeah, so beef is even higher than turkey has been. And, and we've gotten, what's interesting to me is uh, a couple of months ago, we had a bunch of price increases from our main uh, deli slice meat supplier. So you and that's boar's head, you see that in ham, turkey, roast beef, that pork isn't really getting hit too hard right now. It might be up a little 5% or something like that, but the turkey's gone up a bunch and roast beef and beef products generally in our meat market have gone up astronomically. With those supply chain issues, the price has gone up, but another story that we're hearing a lot of is scarcity. You guys are not facing as much in terms of the empty shelves that people think about when they're, they're seeing all these news stories. Yeah, so we've seen the situation in the news on social media with empty shelves and people being like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Um, we've had shortages, don't get me wrong. I mean, we're a gourmet grocery store. People come here to look for certain things. And when Campbell's short on cream of mushroom or cream of celery, which is a Louisiana ingredient, I found out for a lot of different recipes, um, because they might have staffing issues of their own or whatever's going on with the supply chain that's not getting it here to us. Um, we're having to deal with those things. Uh, but as an independent, we have, I think, more than bigger box stores do in terms of sources. We have more options. And so when our first provider of those things doesn't have it, we can step down to step B, plan B, plan C. And we haven't had as much 
here at the store, we haven't seen as much of the empty shelf effect as some of the other places that I've seen around town and online. Which is why it's just so important to shop local, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. We, absolutely. Well, I really want to thank you for your time, Blaze, and uh, good luck this holiday season. I know it's really busy thank for you. you. Thank you. Well, that's Blaze Calandro, manager at Calandro Supermarket here in Baton Rouge. To learn more about Calandro's, head on over to our website at twilighttv.org. Kristen, back to you. I need to go finish my shopping.